Um, glad to be back. Uh, hope the last time I was on, it helped everyone. And today, uh, I think we're getting ready to start some accelerations uh, in some trends and some reversals in others. Uh, everybody probably knows who I am by now. I mostly RSI, but there's other things I look at. I look at price, I look at time, I look at cycles. I think we're about to go into the normal, excuse me, normal seasonal cycle for precious metals for gold and silver. And I've been bullish for a while. Uh, I think the last big bottom we saw at about 1500 for gold. And it's been moving up since. And then we had a pullback to 17 back about a year ago at the end of March. But this movement up, this red line is just, uh, some people call them swing points, I call them pivot points. Just a math calculation to take the high, low and close and figure out what the average price is. And then that green line is a nine period moving average. So I see those pivot points start moving up. I start turning more bullish, which I did back in late March and early April. And these bands with the blue line being in the center, that's just another set of moving averages I do on highs and lows and the outside bands. But it's not Bollinger bands. It's not going to expand and contract. They're price bands based on prices. But as you can see, this red line has crossed above the green and also back here crossed above the uh, upper boundary line there. So that usually tells me that it's on its way and the nine crossed it, uh, right, where did it cross? Right about here. And we've seen an acceleration and this nine day moving average is getting further and further from the uh, high line, I call it. Now in the middle is my RSI charts not with nine and 45 period moving averages. They've been steadily moving higher. They broke above my range rules of 60 for the top of a bear range or the start of a new uptrend and acceleration. And even the nine has crossed the 60 level. The RSI sold off about 10 days ago. Pivot came down. Let me take this off. The pivot came down and then turned back higher. We got back above the nine. So I think we're starting to see an acceleration and we're also looking at the technicals coincident with the seasonal cycles. So this seasonal is from here through, I always said it was a Father's Day gift because you could buy it in late May, early June and ride it usually up into August, September, and then maybe a little shake out in October, and then it turn up again, up into February. So it's one of the most consistent trends I've seen. And also looking at silver, it looks pretty much the same setup, but I, for some reason, think I get a feeling, and my feelings are based on 40 years of experience, what I've seen in charts. I think silver could on a percentage basis go higher. I saw silver go from under $5 in 78 to over $50 in 1980. And I think we have the potential to go to 40 on silver and probably 2,400 on gold. The other thing I watch for is the dollar index because that affects markets. But I think we're going into a commodity inflationary cycle, which is going to affect stocks. And this is why you're seeing this choppiness in stocks, but we can look at the the dollar index here and see it's been falling. And the RSI has topped out way back. This just looked like a bull bear market rally. It's topped out. Now that's down below the 40 level. And we're seeing the pivot and that nine on the bar chart still drop. The bottom is my CFG. It's an RSI. It's my own RSI put together about 20 years ago. Uh, real quick, let's take a look because everybody got hit pretty hard recently with the crypto. And we had talked about it when it was up 
61, 63. I thought maybe we'd get up above 65 to 67, but it failed pretty much up in that area and it's been drifting off. Now, if you notice the last, um, get that arrow off. This last rally attempt that we had, it basically did not get back above that high line. So because it didn't, rolling out the moving averages turned down and it dropped off. We've also stayed below my range rules. We never got it back above 60. We have broken 40. Even the moving average that I use on RSI, a nine period simple of, four, of the RSI 14, broke the 40 level and has dropped, which tells me it's getting ready to accelerate to the downside. So I think the next time we come off, uh, we're probably gonna see it test at 41, or excuse me, not 41, 31,000 low that we made before. And uh, maybe go down lower because now we've got a little bullish divergence and I'd expect to see it probably, now my data is only through the 25th. I haven't updated the machine, the computer, but I think when we take out 31, we could go as low as 26 or 21. But this move down caught a lot of people by surprise because in basic analysis, when people talk about a head and shoulders, you'll see a left shoulder here, the head, and then the right shoulder, and then if it sells off, this had two left shoulders and a head. Didn't have two right shoulders. It immediately reversed when it came right back up and it was just a bounce. Bear market rallies can be impressive. And I, I'm still viewing this gripped. Crypto is still down. I don't think the downtrend's over yet. So protect yourselves and be careful. Let's take a look at, um, what was one everybody was asking me about the other day? Uh, let's see, Dow Jones and S&P. Cancel this. Okay, let's put the Dow up. The Dow is still pretty much uh, in its uptrend, but we've come down and we've tested a couple times. I'm not ready to say it's all clear and I'm also not ready to say head for the hills, but being around as long as I have, I let the charts show me what they're gonna do. And the way these moving averages have turned down, the, uh, we've had a longer term divergence in there and now we're starting to see more of the sell-offs. So we could be seeing close to at least some type of pullback. But one last thing I want to mention is tonight's lunar eclipse. I've seen it over my time that sometimes solar or lunar eclipse come at a time that reverses markets. So we could be seeing topping action here further. We've seen the bottoming action further acceleration in some commodities. And this lunar eclipse is Pretty significant event, you know, I'm not an astrologist or anything, but I've seen it happen too often where you see reversals or accelerations going into an eclipse. So that starts tomorrow. Us on the west east coast of uh, the US, we won't get to see much of it. And uh, most of the west coast will be able to see a better view, but to catch it on the internet because it's, it doesn't happen that often. I remember it happened one time 20 years ago and put a bottom 30 years ago and put a bottom in the treasury bond futures market where the, it gotten all the way down below 60 on the T-bond futures. And at midday, it made the low and at midday that solar eclipse was a total solar eclipse. And then it reversed and so did the bond market. So just a little food for thought, a little bit of your education, watch the skies. It may have an effect on them all again. But I always enjoy being with you. If you need any help, trader011 at msn.com or cardwellrsiedge.com for the website. Take care and have a good evening. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, 
Hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.